Welcome in, everyone, to Lively Lewis Stories. That's right. We're back with even more awesome adventures with Levi and Ivy. Set your story time meter to fun and get ready to join the Lively Lewis crew. All you need is your imagination and... Off we go! I can't wait to see where our story takes us today. Have you ever wanted to get more Lively Lewis in your life? Well, we've got you covered. Grab an adult and zoom over to LivelyLewisShop.com. Or just click on the link in our show notes. Enough about that. Let's get to today's super Lively Lewis story. Levi, stop! Yelled Ivy as she ran from her room down the stairs and into the kitchen, bumping into her mom who was clearing the table from breakfast. Ivy, what's wrong? Asked her mom as she hugged her daughter trying to calm her down. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ivy took a second or two to catch her breath before she blurted, No worse, a snake! A snake in the house? exclaimed her mom, wildly searching the floor in the kitchen with her eyes. She was very afraid of snakes, and just the thought of one being in her house made her very uneasy. No, it was a picture. Levi showed me a picture of a snake in his wildlife magazine, said Ivy as she shuddered. Her mom then stopped looking around frantically and calmly sat Ivy down at the table. She was well aware of Ivy's fear of snakes, but what made the story so hard to believe was that her son, Levi, also had a fear of snakes. So why would he prank Ivy? Well, she was going to find out. Levi, please get downstairs immediately, called his mom. Levi trotted into the kitchen, trying to hide the mischievous smile on his face. Levi, is it true that you scared your sister by showing her a picture of a snake? Asked Levi and Ivy's mom. And if that's the case, how did you even do it? You're scared of snakes too. Levi nodded his head, accepting responsibility for pranking Ivy. Sorry, Mom. Sorry, Ivy, said Levi. I thought it would be funny, but I guess I should have known it wouldn't be to Ivy because I'm scared of snakes, too. I actually just read the title of the article, Super Snakes, Why These Slithery Serpents Are So Important to the Environment, in my magazine, and I didn't even look at the picture. I just threw the magazine on Ivy's bed and ran out of the room. Ivy accepted Levi's apology, and after that, their mom told them to go play together nicely for the rest of the day. They decided to take a walk to the park, and off they went. But as they walked, Ivy couldn't shake the feeling of wanting to get back at Levi for his prank from earlier. So when she saw a twisty stick laying on the ground ahead, she yelled out, Snake! When Levi was right in front of it. He must have jumped a mile and started running before he could see what it actually was. Calm down, Levi! Ivy laughed as she called out to her brother. It's just a stick and a taste of your own medicine. See, getting pranked doesn't feel nice, does it? Levi stopped in his tracks just as he entered the park. He turned and glared at Ivy. He knew she was right, but he didn't like being pranked. Okay, you got me, Ivy. Now that we're even, no more snake pranks, okay? Requested Levi as he stuck out his hand. Shake on it. Ivy reached out and shook his hand. Okay, no more snake pranks. Let's not even talk about snakes anymore. The whole topic is giving me the creeps. You got it, said Levi. If I never hear anyone talk about a snake ever again, I'll be a happy kid. It was at that moment that they saw a little girl that they hadn't seen before. Sitting alone on the swings, she looked so lonely, Levi and Ivy decided to go over and say hello. And when they did, they knew right from the start that they would all be good friends. Hi, I'm Leslie, said the little girl after Levi and Ivy introduced themselves. Leslie had just moved to their neighborhood and was so excited to find some new kids to play with. They discovered very quickly that they had a lot in common and played together for the rest of the morning. But once it hit 12 p.m., Leslie told Levi and Ivy she had to go home for lunch. I had a really fun time playing with you, and I was wondering if you wanted to come over to my house for a play date, Leslie asked. Levi and Ivy definitely wanted to see Leslie again, so they told her they would ask their mom and dad. Sounds good, said Leslie. Here's my address, 22 Snake Hill Road. If you can make it, then I'll see you there around 1 p.m. If not, then we'll meet again at the playground tomorrow. Sound good? Absolutely, answered Levi and Ivy together as they ran back home. However, Levi and Ivy couldn't help but think about what a creepy address Leslie had. I mean, who would want to live on a hill with a bunch of snakes anyways? Once at home, Levi and Ivy ate a quick lunch and told their parents all about Leslie. She lives down the street and around the corner, so can we please go over to play after we're done? Asked Ivy. Their mom was happy that they had made a new friend and weren't pranking each other anymore, so she agreed and let them go over to Leslie's house. She walked them over, met Leslie's parents, and told Levi and Ivy to be home by 4 p.m. Levi and Ivy ran into Leslie's house when their mom left, excited to see where she lived and learn more about her. Do you have any pets? Asked Levi as Leslie showed them around. I sure do, answered Leslie. The best pet ever. 
She told Levi and Ivy to follow her up to her room. Once they got there, Leslie stood in front of the door blocking some kind of sign that was taped up there. Is it a cat or a dog or a guinea pig? Asked Ivy. I love cuddly guinea pigs. Nope, even better, said Leslie as she stepped away from the door, revealing much to Levi and Ivy's dismay what the sign said. Levi and Ivy couldn't believe what they saw. Taped to Leslie's bedroom door was a red and white sign that read, Beware of snake. Oh no, Levi whispered to Ivy. Do you really think there's a snake in there? Maybe she's playing a prank on us. Ivy couldn't even speak. After Levi's prank that morning, she was about done with snakes for the day. Leslie could tell immediately that they were uncomfortable and nervous and wanted to make sure her new friends were all right. I know some people don't like snakes, began Leslie. Are you those people? Levi and Ivy just shook their head yes. We're sorry, but I think we should be going, said Levi. Ivy and I are really, really, really afraid of snakes, and maybe you could come to our house for a play date next time. Or maybe all the times, added Ivy, taking a step back from Leslie's door. Not wanting her new friends to leave, Leslie thought up a plan quickly. If you just give me five minutes, I bet I can make your fear of snakes go away, said Leslie, sounding very sincere. They're such misunderstood, wonderful animals. Just give my little snake, Slinky, a chance and he'll change your mind for sure. Well, Slinky does sound like a cute name, Ivy said reluctantly as she looked at Levi. Maybe we could give it a try. We can do it together, Ivy, said Levi. I'll be here for you and you'll be here for me. And Slinky and I will be here for both of you, giggled Leslie, opening the door. Levi and Ivy gave her the go ahead and then followed Leslie into her room. There in front of them was a glass tank and inside was the biggest snake either of them had ever seen in person. Levi and Ivy felt their knees go weak and the urge to run away wash over them like a wave at the beach. But they wanted to be respectful of their new friend. So they gathered all their courage and together they stood looking at the snake. You guys are doing great said Leslie, looking super proud. I'd like to officially introduce you to Slinky, my ball python. He's super friendly and loves meeting new people. Say hello. Levi and Ivy could barely raise their hands to wave at Slinky, but they did it. Hi there, they both muttered as they stared wide-eyed and frozen in place. Since this wasn't the first time Leslie had met people who didn't like snakes, she knew just what to do. In order to try and get to like Slinky or snakes in general, you need to know a bit more about them, Leslie began. By getting to know them like you got to know me, you may find that they're pretty cool. Just give Slinky a chance. Leslie then went on to share fun facts about snakes with Levi and Ivy as they kept a safe, comfortable distance from Slinky's tank. She started out by telling them all about what an important role snakes play in the world's ecosystem. How out in the wild, snakes are both predator and prey. They provide food for birds, mammals, and other reptiles, but also help control pest population by making their dinner out of pesky rodents and slugs. I guess that's pretty nice of them said Ivy, refusing to get any closer to Slinky's tank, but still keeping her eyes glued right on him. Still nervous? Asked Leslie. Well, let me tell you some cool facts about snakes, things that will totally make you look at them in a whole new light. Leslie went on to tell Levi and Ivy a whole bunch of cool facts about snakes, and as she did, Levi and Ivy seemed to become a bit more relaxed and were really listening to her, impressed and amazed at what they heard. Leslie told them how snakes smell with their tongues. By flicking their tongues around, they pick up chemical molecules from the air, ground, and water around them. The molecules are then carried back to the roof of the snake's mouth, where they are analyzed to determine what smelly snack is waiting for them if a predator is lurking. Some species of snakes can fly like superheroes. By flattening out their ribs into a C-shape to trap air under their bodies, they can glide gracefully through the air. Snakes can see heat. Another super cool snakey superpower. Some snakes like pythons that can't see well use openings in front of their eyes called pit holes to sense heat given off by warm-blooded prey. This unique adaptation allows these snakes to track prey during the night as easily as during the day. Snakes don't even have eyelids. Instead, they have outer transparent coverings over their eyes that covers them all the time. This spectacular body part is called the spectacle. And what's cooler than an animal that can shed its skin? Am I right? Like changing into a new size of clothes when you outgrow your old ones? This is how a snake gets to get a little more comfy as it grows larger and larger. Pretty cool, huh? Asked Leslie, hoping Levi and Ivy were warming up to Slinky. And much to her excitement, they were. Leslie's super snake facts were working. She had just one more thing that she knew would make Levi and Ivy true snake buddies for life. She knew if they just touched Slinky that they would have a new appreciation for these amazing creatures. Thank you for telling us all about snakes, said Levi. 
It was so interesting. I didn't know any of that stuff before, added Ivy. I guess we should have gotten to know snakes better before deciding that we didn't like them. I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad you said that, Leslie replied with a big smile. Since you seem a lot more comfortable than when you first stepped in here, I have one more thing I'd like you to try. If I take Slinky out of the tank, you have to be brave and give her a touch. Levi and Ivy took a step back and didn't know how to respond. They wanted to be nice to Leslie and Slinky, but they didn't know if they could physically do it. After a little pep talk from Leslie, where she told them it was completely their choice and she wouldn't be mad if they didn't want to, they decided to give it a shot. Leslie acted quickly, not knowing if they would change their minds. Once Slinky was out of her tank, she laid calmly in Leslie's hands. She was much more gentle and sweet, looking up close, Levi remarked. Ivy was the first to slowly reach out a shaking hand and touch Slinky on the back. Wow, her scales feel so dry and smooth, she said, motioning for Levi to feel them. He did so and couldn't believe what he was doing. He felt really proud of himself, and Ivy too. Slinky is really nice, said Ivy, petting the snake as Leslie told them more about her. Like where she bought her, how long she's had her, and how old Slinky was. After a few minutes, Leslie put Slinky back in her tank and told Levi and Ivy what a great job they both did. Overcoming your fear of snakes is a huge deal, said Leslie. Thank you for giving Slinky a chance and all the snakes for that matter. Levi and Ivy knew their mom would never believe what they had just done, especially given the way that the day had started out and her fear of snakes as well. And that's when they talked to Leslie and asked if she could help them out with something at their house. When she heard about what it was, she loved their idea and grabbed Slinky's travel carrier. Once inside, they took Slinky down the street and around the corner to Levi and Ivy's home. Once again, Levi and Ivy called their mom. Oh, hi, you three, their mom said. I didn't expect to see you back here so soon. Mom, we've got a big surprise for you. Levi began as he looked at Ivy with a mischievous look. Hey, I know that look. This isn't a prank, is it? Asked their mom, getting a bit suspicious of what could be in the carrier. Not a prank, just a chance to face your fear, said Ivy. Like we just did at Leslie's house. That's when they told their mom all about what they just did, and their mom immediately knew what was in the carrier and what was going on. She was nervous, but stepped forward knowing Levi and Ivy had faced their fear, and so should she. Leslie asked if she was ready before opening the carrier. Ready as I'll ever be, said Levi and Ivy's mom as she looked her biggest fear right in the eyes and learned all about snakes from Leslie, Levi, and Ivy. And after it was all over, she was so happy that she did, finding out like Levi and Ivy did that snakes are pretty amazing creatures that just need a chance. Want to start a podcast? Spotify has an easy, free platform called Spotify for Podcasters. Here's how it works. Record and edit your podcast on your phone or computer with ease. Share your podcast on Spotify and all other major platforms. You can even make video podcasts on Spotify. If you want to engage with your audience more, use Q&A and polls. You can earn money through ads and podcast subscriptions. It's completely free, no hidden cost. Give it a try. Visit www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. We love making our podcast and working with Spotify has been amazing. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the story and learned a little something too. And since we know everyone has their own story, we'd love to hear yours. If you have an idea for a Lively Lewis story, leave a comment on our Apple podcast review page with five stars, your idea and your little one's name. Then maybe our next adventure will be with you. Until our next story time hangout. Thanks for listening. We can't wait to share another fun, lively Lewis story with you.